Hey everyone, Zachary Dassin here, and in this lesson, I'm going to be covering how to attach the arm to the torso. So, this one's a bit harder than how to attach legs to a torso, um, and I'll go ahead and show you why. So, we're going to start with a basic stick figure again, you know, pretty standard. Um, and now, uh, let's put in a rib cage have the rib cage like so and you have the pelvis down here or the simplification of this and everything I'm doing right now is going to be a simplification and the reason is um, I actually have learned the anatomy of this so many times and forgotten it uh, that I realized you know what I don't really need all the anatomy uh, all I really use is a portion and so uh, that's what I remember, and it tends to be very simple. So, the thing with the arms is that when you're drawing arms and connecting them to the torso, you're really not just dealing with the arms. Um, so, let's say the arms are here. That's only an oh, yeah. simplified stick figure arms, right? And the hands are here somewhere. Okay, that's only part of the equation. Uh, the bigger part is this whole area, the clavicle scapula region. And so the arms include the entire shoulder, shoulder girdle. And so what you have is you have clavicles that come around like this. And let me use a different color for them. They go like this, and these are your collarbones, and they attach to the sternum, which is the middle portion it kind of looks like a tie it's the middle portion of the uh, rib cage and so you have that and then the clavicles attach to the scapula behind and those are like triangle shaped bones and they've got this notch that comes and connects with the clavicles but the arms these parts connect to the scapula. So the arms don't connect to the the arms don't connect to the collarbone. The arms connect with the scapula and the scapula connects with the collarbones and the collarbones connect to the sternum and that's why it's so complicated. So let's start breaking down the parts of this. So maybe we'll start with the rib cage. Now the thing to remember about the rib cage is from a side view it looks kind of like this you know, it's a bit more flat in the back and it comes around like this so you've got an angle here right and then an angle here um, and then you have the spine and the spine's doing something like this and you have the head you know here um, okay so comes out a lot more but anyway so you have the ribs at this angle and then from the top it's sort of like this where if we're just looking down at the rib cage it looks a bit like I guess this shape with the sternum going down like that and this is where your neck uh, connects to and this is fairly flat okay so now we can start to figure out these other parts. Okay, so I'll try and stick with the same color. So red is the clavicles, right? Um, let's just get the sternum, sternum in first. So the sternum is like that, okay, and goes down here. All right, so clavicles, what are they doing? Well, from the top view, what they're doing is they're going like this around, and you can think of it in a couple ways. Um, a lot of people think of it as handlebars, and I think that's a very good uh, way of imagining it. But you can either think of them as like one part, and then another part, and then another part. So they're made up of three parts. Or you can think of it as one part here, and then sort of like this curve shape, like an S-curve. And it's doing that. Or you could think of it as one part here, and more like a even just simplify it to one curve. So I guess that would be three parts. Um, if you go like duh, 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 and then if you go duh, 
da, that's two parts, and if you just go da, wait, whatever, it's two parts again. Um, but that's how I think of it. Is like the most important thing is to remember it goes around, it goes like this, and then it goes back. So the arms where they connect is back here, right? Okay. Now in the side view, you would see that because they're not gonna be, you know, forward. They're gonna be a bit back, right? Then um, they can be sort of, you know, especially if you have uh, back muscle. Uh, they're more towards the middle, I suppose, but uh, this also moves, the shoulder part moves, so it can move forward this way, or it can move that way. But roughly they're here, and then let's get the clavicles again. So what they're doing is they come around and they attach like that. So you get this kind of shape, right? So the, from the top, it looks like this, and from the side, it looks like this. So what about the scapula? Well. A scapula from the side, they just kind of look flat like that. And from the top, they're actually going at an angle like this. Now, I shouldn't be talking about the scapula without doing a back view. So let's do a back view, okay? So we've got the ribs, it's fine. And this, well, I'm just going to simplify it to this kind of oval shape for the ribs and this kind of bowl shape for the pelvis, okay? So this is the spine in the back. So now what's happening is we have the arms. So let's just do the clavicles from the back. There's going to look, they look fairly straight, like same from the front, right? This looks pretty straight. Um, but you can see from the top view uh, that there's actually that curve to it, right? Like that. Um, so, okay. So from the back view, they're also going to look straight, but this is all hidden behind this rib cage. And you might see them peeking out a bit here, the collarbones. Right, so let's get those in. Red for collarbones. Now what's happening with the scapula is the way I simplify them are uh, these triangle shapes, right? Just like this. Okay, and how wide are they? Well, I try and fit three um, on the rib cage. Like generally the width of the rib cage is like that, right? And try and fit, you know, space for three. And it's similar if you know um, the proportions of the face, uh, how you have like an eye width apart between the two eyes. Uh, that's kind of the same idea with the scapula, where you could fit another scapula in between these two. Okay, so you have that. Now, how does it connect to the clavicle? Well, on the scapula, you have this bone, this part of the scapula that protrudes and it goes upwards like that. And that has like a little notch at the end and that connects to the clavicles. Okay, so the clavicles connect to this notch. But you also have around here, you have like this area, the socket, um, and that's where the arm connects here do it here so that's where the arm connects and so it's important to remember that in the top view both the scapula and the uh, the clavicle they have an angle like the scapula is not flat against the back like that it has a bit of an angle to it like that it's following the rib cage which is curved and so is the clavicle. It's following this curved shape. Okay, and basically what that means is that when you're thinking about the arms, remember that the arms are not on a flat plane. Like too often I see this thing where you have a figure and it's sort of broken down like a box, right? Like you'll see this box shape for the torso. And the reason why this isn't good um, to draw from is that this is telling you that this is really flat, right? And then from the back, like, oh, let's just finish it off and give it a head here. But yeah, this is saying that this is really flat, which it isn't. It's got this curve to it and then a curve in the back as well. 
So you're dealing with a shape that's more like this. And the rib cage has volume as well. And that's really important because um, when you're doing the arms, oh, that's a terrible shape, sorry. <laughs> I got really confused. Um, okay, so what are we doing? Got this going this way, this going this way, goes around, goes to the back, and this comes around. Yeah, something more like that. Okay, so what's happening is that when you have the arms here, you will have this arm and you've got the clavicle and it's going around, right? Like that, it's going around. And you have the scapula here and then the scapula here. But this back arm is often hidden by a lot of the mass, not completely, but it's hidden a lot by the mass of the chest. Um, now you could have a smaller chest, of course, um, but especially with a muscular person, you have to remember the arm is behind this. And so you see this arm, and then you have all this area. If I was to do um, a contour, you have this coming forward and around. So it is not just like this one where it goes like this and then this, right? This is way too flat. Um, you need it to go around and then the arm is situated, you know, at a different plane than the front. So you've got this arm portion here and that's just put some shading on it to make it more clear. So this is a side plane and then this is a side plane and this is a front plane and this is a front plane, right? And then this is a front plane as well. So that's what we're dealing with. All right, so this is all well and good, um, but now how do the muscles actually connect? Well, this is what we're gonna go into now. So this part, I'll just keep this and lower the opacity and then just draw on top of this. So we have the clavicle and <clears throat> none of the bones are the way they are by accident. And that's really important. Usually when they have notches or things, that's a place where something else connects. So for instance, the, the shape of the clavicle, it's got this like bump here and it goes around and then it's got like a part here. Okay, so this bump, this, these notches are where muscles connect to. So you have a muscle coming around, the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and it goes around and connects to this part, and it also connects to this part. Okay, so this is the front portion, and then, like, you know, from the top view, it's just colored. Okay, let's color this as like one portion, and on the top view, it's this. That's one portion. And then there's this portion here, which is here, right? Okay, so I'll just outline that. And remember, it's this part here, this purple part, that's where the uh, scapula that protrusion that goes up this part of the scapula connects. And it connects to that top part of the, the purple part of the clavicle. Okay, so, so this is where the sternocleidomastoid muscle connects, which is a muscle in the neck. Okay, so what connects here to this part? Well, two muscles in the back, what connects to it, and again, I'll just color this in purple, here and here. In the back, what connects to it is the trapezius muscle. And the trapezius muscle, I mean, I've covered this in many videos on the back, so you might wanna look at other anatomy videos before you take a look at this. Um, but the trapezius goes behind uh, the neck, and it's actually the back portion of the neck is the trapezius. And it connects along this ridge and you get this diamond shape of this muscle, like roughly a diamond, which is why it's called the trapezius because it's like a trapezoid. And this here is a hollow where you have the seventh cervical vertebra. So 
you have this shape, right, for the trapezius. And this is connecting across the ridge of the scapula here. And in the front, it connects to this portion of the clavicle. So I'm going to make that neck a little less thick because maybe this person's not super buff um, and just define the face. So the trapezius is connecting here on the top, here, and it goes like this and it goes around. And that's why you have, um, and then from the back, it's all this area, right? All this is trapezius. And so you have this shape um, emerge and let's do it from the top view just to make it more clear. So here, the trapezius is connecting all here and it goes to the back of the head and it goes around like this. So orange and it's all here. Does that make sense? Um, this is pretty difficult in some ways, but it's very important that you understand how this works because it makes a lot more sense when you look at the figure and you see like, oh, okay, so this is why you have this sort of hollow area where you have the neck and it's doing like it's coming around like this. And then you have the shoulders if you, you know, grab hold of your shoulders and they feel like they're coming forward. But then between the neck and the shoulders, there's a more hollow patch. And that's the trapezius, uh, the space between the neck and the trapezius because the trapezius connects here. So that's what connects to the top of the clavicle. But we're drawing the arms, right? So what connects to the bottom? Well, on this green portion, it's the pectoralis muscle, which is the chest muscle connects here and it connects to the arm like this part connects to the arm and it's got this fanning shape to it okay and so what connects to this purple part so if the if the chest muscle connects to all this green portion here and the sternum and here what connects to the purple portion well this is where we get into the arms. That's where the deltoid connects. Okay, so the deltoid comes around, and if this is the arm, uh, or what do you call it, the top portion of the arm. I think it's called the arm, and then this is called the forearm, I think. But anyway, the top part of the arm. Um, the deltoid comes around, and it connects to this part. In the front, it connects to this purple part, and then it goes about halfway the length of this arm is actually deltoid and that's really important uh, and the deltoid is the shoulder muscle so you get this shape right here and let's do it to the back so how does it connect to the back and how does it connect to the top um, and the side okay so this is the front view now what's happening in the back view well the deltoid connects to this ridge at the bottom and it goes around and again, you know, it's going to be the same as in the front. It's halfway this length and it's sort of got this shape. Now it can change depending on how, um, how much you work out and stuff or your gender or just how developed your muscles are. Um, this shape can change, but usually what's important to notice is that it's, it tends to be fatter near the bottom and not near the top. Because sometimes what you get with people is they'll draw a shoulder and they sort of do this shape, like very rounded. And um, I don't know if you're into bodybuilding, maybe it's the 3D delts that you're looking for. Um, but usually it's got more of the mass lower down and not higher up. So you've got this part of the shoulder and then in the back it's connecting like this to the scapula. So this is why it's super important to know the scapula. It's like, oh, okay, so the scapula is holding on and the clavicle, the scapula holds on from the back and the clavicle holds on from the front. And these guys are like really good friends, the scapula and the clavicle. They're buddies because they're, you know, they're always doing stuff together. And so when the arm moves, um, and they've got quite a bit of motion, uh, range of motion to them. So when the arm moves, these guys, are the ones that are moving it around. And because of that, the arm doesn't go anywhere without these parts um, 
moving as well. So let's do it from the side view now. So from the side view, or rather the top down view. Yeah, sorry, we'll do the top down view first. So from top down, what you get is this, which is the front portion here. And then you have that connecting to this ridge of the, the scapula. So you get something roughly like this, like this type of shape. Um, and so what's in the middle of the deltoid? Well, that is this part where the scapula and the clavicle meet. And you can feel this. Um, actually, the shoulder is probably not so far out as I made it, maybe more like that. But you can feel this bony part at the top of your shoulder blade. It's, uh, for me anyway, because uh, I lost some mass, um, I can feel the bone and how it connects and how it connects to the scapula and, and the humerus and stuff. So it's important to know that this part's all bone, right? This is all bone. And then you've got this shoulder muscle. And let's quickly do it from the side. Well, okay, so what's the purple part? The purple part's this part. And it's hard in the side view because this, like, okay, so you've got this from the top down view, right? That's a clavicle. This is where it, and it's the arm is here. And this is the sternum. That's fine. But from the side view, we're looking at this part from here, right? So our eyes are looking towards this. So we just see like head on. You, you wouldn't really see that this whole portion is coming towards us, but you do see this part. This part has an angle, but then this part again, the front part is, it's hidden, right? So really you don't see much, maybe something like that you see from the side view for the clavicle. And then you have the, the scapula, and remember the scapula has an angle to it, right? Like here, we see it from the top view. It's got this angle. So that's meeting this muscle. I mean, uh, the clavicle, sorry, because they're good buddies. And they're gonna high five and hold on to the deltoid. So then the deltoid comes down and it comes around like that. So here we have the deltoid from the side view. And then what else can we put in? Well, remember that um, what connects to the top. So you've got this part, the purple part, what connects to that? Well, it's the trapezius. So the trapezius is connecting to this purple part and it's going around see here. It connects to the back of the neck. So we have to go around and go up and that connects to the back of the head. And so all of this now is the trapezius. And it's hard because, or at least it was hard for me, it's hard because when you just look at it from a side view, everything seems fairly flat, but you really have to remember like this thing, this trapezius is going back in space. Look at how much space there is between here and then the back of the head here. That's a big distance. And all that distance is being portrayed from here to here, like that. It's just in perspective. So it's hard to notice, but it's really important to remember that this is going into the back. And when you have the chest here, this portion right here is way further in front than this back here. And it's the same as this with this arm, right? Like this is way in front of this, right? So especially down here, so it's very important to understand, at least in your head, even if you don't, um, you can't really draw it too much, it's really important to remember how these things are connecting and how this is in the front, or this is behind further back than this, and this is, the deltoid is more forward than the chest. Okay, so now I feel like the major players are on the stage and you've got uh, scapula, scapula, you've got, or also known as shoulder blades, you've got um, trapezius, you've got deltoid, and deltoids, and you've got clavicles, and you've got sternum, which, yeah, not really necessary, and you've got pectoralis, pectoralis. So 
Yeah, let's get rid of sternum a bit. And these are the things that you need to consider. Uh, so let's just lower the opacity and sort of fill in where these go. So from the back view, you know, your trapezius comes around like that, right? It goes down. And the way I draw, like quickly, is I just draw these as triangles, okay, for the scapula. And I draw a ball at the end, which represents the, uh, the humerus. And then you have your deltoid coming from here, this point, all this scapula region, you get the deltoid. Then underneath here, underneath the deltoid, you get the triceps. And the deltoid is pretty cool because what it does is it divides the arm, uh, it divides the triceps and the biceps. So from the side view, here we go. We have the deltoid and it comes around and it has this short, sort of shape. And it's got three portions, which is why it's called the deltoid, because delta is like triangle. It's got, uh, well, no, because it's a triangular shaped muscle. But yeah, it's got three portions. Um, and two of those portions are towards the front and one is towards the back. So um, this whole area is the back portion of the deltoid. And then in the front, so let's just get the clavicles here. And that PZS going around. So the first uh, two portions are visible from the front and then the third portion is visible from the back and all three are sort of visible from the side. Um, and you have your bicep here. So in the side view, again, you have your bicep here and the tricep back here. And this connects to your um, elbow. And then you have the rest of your arm going down like that. Okay, so this is really how it connects. So you've got your tricep and you've got your elbow. And then you've got other muscles. You've got infraspinatus and uh, teres major and teres minor. Um, I don't worry about those too much. All I really care about is the triangle of the scapula. And then you have latissimus dorsi, which comes around the back. And that too goes towards this area. So when does that become an issue? Well, that becomes an issue when you're raising your arms or uh, even if you have your arms to the side, let's say this person has a very wide frame uh, on this side anyway. So you've got your chest muscle going towards uh, the humerus of the arm, which is just this arm portion, this arm bone called the humerus. And then down here you have two bones. And so here you've got the deltoid, then you've got the tri triceps in the back, the biceps in the front, and the chest muscle connecting to the arm. And then you've got other parts of, you've got the forearm down here. And since this is just a connection video of the arm to the torso, I'm not gonna be covering the forearm because um, then this would just be way too long. But you've got this type of thing going on. So let's just color in our players. Deltoid here and deltoid here and deltoid here. Triceps just back here a little bit you might see. Uh, probably not triceps here on the side and then in the back all well, this is triceps and then biceps here here and you wouldn't see it from the back so these are arm people players things and then trapezius here from the side here from the front here and what else do we have? And then we have the chest, right? Chest 
here. And here. And with all these colors, I'm guessing you can probably figure out why this is a digital and not a traditional tutorial. Because um, there's just a lot going on. And you can divide the, the deltoid into its components. And the way I think of it is that the bicep, like in the middle of the bicep, is around that anyway, seems to be where this deltoid portion, the second portion, connects into. Um, so you have these two parts. And then you have the trapezius in the back. And I guess that's it for the components. And now let's do a bit of drawing with the arm in raised position so we can see a little bit more about how to handle that. So when I raise the arm, um, usually it's always the same. I start with a stick figure-ish thing or if not a stick figure, like a basic guide, and then I draw like where the arm is going. So let's say the arm's doing this sort of thing. All right, then I just think about it like, okay, so let's say this is a back view. You're gonna have the trapezius and you're gonna have the, the scapula. And the scapula is gonna be tilted, right? Because it's tilted upwards. And then this one, let's say this arm's down, right? So get a basic circle in to represent the shoulder. You get the scapula in, and then the trapezius is going down in this case. Then you have the deltoid. And then the deltoid, as we covered before, um, goes sort of like this on the scapula. And this one is going to be going up. So we're going to get the trapezius, and it's also going up but see how when you raise this this stuff this muscle has to go somewhere so it ends up crunching um, and it gets in a narrower space from here to here than compared to here to here right so that's going to crunch and it's going to go up and then you're going to get the deltoid which also going to be lifted and it's going from the scapula so let's just draw the outline of this top part of the scapula. So that goes up. And then you have all this trapezius muscle here that's also getting compressed, right? So that all gets compressed. Now, after that, um, oh, and we can draw, you know, the neck and stuff and the back of the head, sure. Get that in. Get the back of the ears. Um, but after this it tends to be all just overlapping like what is going to overlap what and this is i don't know i find this very hard to to do because it's it takes a while so i know the deltoid overlaps pretty much everything and then under that you get the triceps um i think Maybe Terrace Minor goes overlaps the triceps like this, and then Terrace Major, uh, which is another muscle, uh, comes around like this, and then the lats go up. So I know that, and again, you see how I'm not a per, uh, an expert on this, but I know the lats go under the tricep. The deltoid goes over the tricep like that, and then you have the triceps here. And they're going towards the elbow. And you have, uh, this would be all the forearm. And the biceps, I suppose, from this position, maybe you'd see a bit of them. Possibly uh, just a touch of the biceps here. Um, but a lot of that's just going to be hidden. And then, let's see, on this side, uh, we can do the same thing. So the lats come around sort of like, mm, I don't know. I almost think of them 
as if they're like a sheet or something. And they go, they actually connect to the front area of the um, humerus muscle. So let's just fill in this area, go around like this. And then they go to the front. Then you have the deltoid. And you have the tricep coming down like that. And then, what else? You'd have the obliques around here. Not that that's really what we're covering, but okay, yeah, forget that. And then, uh, what else? We have the trapezius. So, okay, get the trapezius in. And then the trapezius is still behind the lats, so. And then here you have in this region you have infraspinatus and that just covers the scapula and you I don't know like I don't really I guess you have teres minor here and then teres major here something like that but the point is I don't really think about all of these individual tiny things. I just try and get the bigger ones. So the deltoid, the trape uh, the triceps, the trapezius and stuff. Oh yeah, and from the front, just in case. Uh, I mentioned like the trapezius attaches here, but this whole part, it's still trapezius. It's just the trapezius showing through from behind. Like I just wanted to uh, indicate that this part's in front and this part's, you know, this part's behind. Uh, but it's still trapezius. But this part is the neck. All this is the neck. So that is not trapezius. Um, oh, yeah, and breasts. So with breasts, the thing is, well, I've covered this in the breast tutorial, but I'll just go over it again because some people were asking. Um, the anatomy between males and females when it comes to just musculature and bone structure is not that different. Uh, in terms of volume, sure. But not in terms of the components. What's the big difference is the fatty portions. And with the breasts, you get like a fatty area that comes around, kind of like a comma shape. And then you get it sitting on top of the pec muscle. So it's kind of like this shape. What color should they be? You kind of get this shape, but otherwise it's not really different. So I don't really feel like, well, I should go into tons of detail because really the breasts are going to follow what the other forms do. So let's say the arms raised, uh, we just have to do a front view, and torso. Get the arm raised, and this is going to be a woman, so give a bit wider hips. And okay, so the arm goes up, trapezius goes up, collarbone goes up, this one's the same. And then we have our head here. Okay, so as the, the deltoid goes up, you get the bicep underneath here and then you have the lats actually going up into this area and then behind that you have the triceps so uh, let's go back to these colors of this guy and you have the triceps here and the biceps going up like here and you have the deltoid here and then you have the chest muscle oh and the lats so let's just do the, the pecs, the pectoralis. Um, I guess I should do it using this pink color. Other pectoralis muscle. Deltoid. Bicep. Um, so then you have the lats going around the back 
but then connecting forward into here. So you get this. And then we still have the breasts that we're, we're dealing with. So what's going to happen is just this. Like Think of it like this comma shape. And this one's going to get pulled up. And this one is not. So this one is getting pulled up like so. And this one is not. Now, of course, it's not going to look like that in the drawing because human beings aren't, you know, multicolored. Uh, and with the nipple as well, you could show how it's getting pulled up and then this one's more relaxed. Um, but with a normal drawing, all you would do is, okay, so you just indicate the parts usually where there's overlap. So that goes around, you get the nipples here. And then this is coming up. This goes around. And you get this kind of thing with the, uh, like this part's a bit complicated because it's like, see what's happening with this coming behind and this going in the front and then this. Um, you don't have to detail it completely. You can actually get away with just something like even just this type of shape will convey the message of what's going on. Um, and then you have the trapezius. And then on this side, you know, maybe indicate the collarbone, uh, indicate a bit of the sternocleidomastoid, um, maybe the shadow of the neck, and then maybe the clavicles. Um, Maybe. Put a bit more space in between those breasts and there. So you would get something more like that, right? And then here, what's happening with the armpit is what the armpit really is, is there's a space between, just increase the opacity, between the pecs and the lats, there's like some space, right? A hollow. And that's just skin that covers that hollow. And it's sort of, I guess, like this diamondy shape thing. And, and that's your armpit, really. It's just that space between these two parts. Um, so there's that. And I mean, in the back, it's a similar thing. Just. I mean, no, we did the back here. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess for the most part, that's it. That's what I would want to convey is that um, think of all these things and then think of how they overlap and the lats come forward. Like that's super important. And yeah, I guess that's it. So I hope this helped and thanks for watching.